we are going to start the program. A very good morning to all. Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Assam Downtown University, would like to welcome all the participants to this webinar. Today is the first webinar of the mental health series that we are organizing in collaboration with IQAC. Now looking at the present pandemic situation, which has impacted our lives immensely, and we have been facing an enormous challenge as far as our mental health is concerned. So this series of webinar has been initiated by our managing trustee, Gorishi Ma'am. Ma'am has initiated this series of webinar. First of all, I would like to welcome Gorishi Ma'am. Dr. Sima Sharma, Dean, Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. A hearty welcome to you, ma'am, for encouraging us and being the pillar of strength and a pioneer of this series of webinars. We would like to welcome Dr. Anjan Thakur, sir, who is the Director of Quality Process under IQSC. I would like to say that this series of webinars has been organized in collaboration with IQAC. Thank you, sir, for joining this uh, webinar and also for encouraging us in the process. I would like to uh, welcome all the student mentors who are present today and also the students for whom we have spoken specially arranged this webinar today. And we have with us today two very eminent resource persons working in the field of mental health. Looking at the present situation of the uncertainties in the field of academics, which is uh, impacting the mental health of our students, we feel that we have to address this issue and today's webinar is specially organized for them. And we have with us uh, two very renowned mental health professionals uh, who would be uh, acting as the two resource person. And I would like to introduce them. First of all, I would like to welcome Dr. Anwesha Das and Jayashree Das to this uh, webinar. And I would like to introduce Anwesha Das he has cleared his MD in psychiatry from Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College with a university gold medal for academic performance in MD finals. He is currently a consultant psychiatrist in psychiatry clinic in Kohati. He is also a consultant at Namcare Hospitals. He has multiple papers, chapters published in national and international journals and books. He has also authored two books in psychiatry. He is currently the Assistant Secretary of Assam State Branch of Indian Psychiatry Society. He is the current ass Assistant Treasurer of IAPP and the current Convener of LGBT Task Force of Indian Psychiatric Society. He is also associated with Mrinmoy, which deals in mental health awareness activities. His area of interest are child and adolescent psychiatry and community psychiatry. And then we have uh, Jayashree Das, who is a consultant clinical psychologist in the psychiatry clinic Gohati. Jayashree Das is an RCI registered clinical psychologist practicing in Gohati. She did her MPhil in clinical psychology from LGBRIMH, Tespur Assam. Currently, she is pursuing her PhD on social emotional learning 
and its importance in school mental health. Her areas of interest are child and adolescent mental health and community psychiatry. She's secretary of the Trust Marine Moy. She's actively involved in various awareness activities related to mental health, visits various social fora, schools and colleges for raising the importance of understanding mental health. Now I would like to request our respected Dean, Dr. Seema Sharma, ma'am, to welcome the participants. A very good morning to all. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. I, Dr. Seema Sharma. We will extend a warm welcome to our esteemed speakers of the day, Ms. Jayashri Das and Dr. Anmeshak Das, and to all my faculty members and my dear students. A pandemic which has taken the world with its ripples, being felt in every group, nook and corner over the last few months, certainly has brought new challenges for us every day. And all of us are trying to adapt and improvise to the new normal. However, it is not uh, just as long as a new uncertainty. Issue, I think. We are fortunate to have Ms. Jayashree and Dr. Anvesha Das with us here today who can provide us with your voice is broken. Ma'am's voice is broken. We can't hear you. I think I would like, uh, I would like to request the means uh, our research person to carry on the session, I think. Okay. So uh, I think ma'am should know about that. Uh, you can send her a text message, ma'am. Yes. Oh, you want more question for that line? Oh. Pick up the tomorrow, come by any other. Um, Majusna, madam. Yes. Uh, please announce the means feedback. Is that thing also? Yeah. Sorry for the disturbance. Ma'am is having some connectivity issue. I think we'll start with the technical session. Sorry for the inconveniences. I have some technical issues. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Now, so without uh, taking up further time, I think we should start up the session because we are eagerly waiting to listen to both of you. Thank you. And I over to Dr. Manjusa Sekia for continuing the session. Thank you. Thank you, Seema ma'am. Now I would like to hand over the first session to Dr. Anveshak Das. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, let me share the screen first. Yeah, is it visible to all? Yes, sir. Yeah, is it visible, right? Uh, uh, a very good morning to all the uh, senior faculty members, uh, teachers, uh, uh, senior staff of IQS department at some downtown university, uh, students, and my dear friends. Uh, at the very outset, before I begin, my sincere thanks and uh, gratitude to, first of all, obviously, Goryoshi Dr. Ma'am. Uh, we fondly call her Bab because we have a fond relation. 
and uh, manjusa ma'am for coordinating with us uh, for giving us the opportunity honor and privilege to be uh, the research person in this series of uh, webinars uh, to start with we have divided our sessions into two we'll be speaking about around 40 minutes time i'll be speaking on anxiety and coping with stress and jayesh will be speaking on resilience uh, 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 we'll have we'll have the question answer session and whatever queries to be cleared up after the end of both the sessions because i guess uh, i guess after listening to both the uh, sets of lectures uh, people will have or the uh, participants will have a broader perspective what to ask and uh, uh, what not to so because uh, uh, it's a uh, Uh, both the lectures are uh, in a way connected to each other. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, um, as we are going through very unprecedented time and challenging period because of the ongoing pandemic and uh, anxiety and stress, uh, everybody, every every person throughout uh, the world globally is going through. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, can I, I kindly ask everyone to unmute their so that uh, for the best better listening. so anyhow uh, uh, so uh, i have not prepared this lecture or this uh, 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 powerpoint presentation in a way so that people can cope with the current pandemic because this pandemic is just a temporary situation so i i will give some broader perspectives so how to cope up with anxiety and stress uh, in the few uh, future coming years or because Uh, traumas, uh, unprecedented events, challenging life events uh, are bound to occur in everybody's life. So, how do we prepare and uh, how do we cope up with those stress and anxiety factors? It's what my aim is to uh, deliver to the audiences today. Uh, that is why I have uh, just given. Uh, you can see uh, I have added another line: mental health awareness, just to make you aware of what. anxiety is what the features of anxiety are how what is stress and how to cope up with the stress and i'll give some brief tips how to cope up with these issues and not uh, in relation with the pandemic per se so to begin with uh, health uh, so what is health basically uh, who has beautifully defined it as the total physical mental and social well being it's not that anyone is not having any disease or he is free of diabetes he is free of uh, hypertension he does not have any heart problem it does not mean that he is in a good health or someone is not obese that he is in a bad health someone is very fit someone is very muscular going to the gym regularly he is in a good health that is not the issue basically you need to have a proper set of mental and social well being in order to call yourself as a healthy individual and also uh, so it consists of three dimensions you can see in the screen physical mental and social well being and another fourth dimension now it is is added that is the spiritual dimension the spiritual well being also uh, uh, uh in fact who has already said that having a healthy mind is just as important as healthy body and there is no health without a proper set of emotional well being or proper set of positive healthy mind uh so if we define technically or the textbook definition of mental health uh, it is the state of successful performance of mental functioning which results in our productive activities whatever activities we do be it teaching be it uh, studying be it uh, in our business career be it in our professional life be it Uh, how we go about to see patients in our life and finally fulfilling relationship with other people with your teachers with your peers with your family members with your relatives with your siblings anybody and most importantly what our uh, lecture is today is the ability to adapt to change to cope up with stress and to cope up with adversities and come out with flying colors it's uh, uh, if someone has good set of mental health he'll definitely tide the storm and come out with whatever situation he is put up into so mental health if you define has three dimensions is the emotions how we feel the emotion controls our thought how we think with our emotions and finally both emotions and thoughts uh, define our behavior how we act in a particular situation how we react to people around us uh, with our emotions and so uh, ultimately uh, if we have uh a uh, uh, positive uh, sets of thoughts if we have a positive sets of emotion and Uh, if we act uh, positively on, uh, uh, on in accordance uh, with our thoughts and emotion definitely our performance 
is going to be enhanced in whatever uh, area we do so it is the power of acting right feeling right and thinking right is what proper mental health is uh, anybody who has a good set of mental health realizes his or her own abilities sets his dreams his goals and moves towards his aspirations again can cope up with the normal stressors of life and be productive productive not only with yourself or with your career or with your family members but in a way what who says that uh, we can productively contribute to our community our society and uh, be uh, responsible citizens of our society and the country and that's why who has very importantly mentioned that any society uh, to have a good set of social cohesion a good set of social productivity and finally peace and stability the members who are uh, uh, or the citizens of the country should have a good set of social and emotional well being also that is what the who said in its conference in 2005 uh, so why awareness is needed in mental health uh, we know mental health problems are uh, quite common nowadays and uh, uh, and most of them are under reported most of them are not uh, taken help of and ultimately it causes a huge problem a humongous problem not only in the family not only in the child not only in the uh, uh, individual himself but again in the community itself and uh, from the individual perspective or the subjective perspective it can leave a lifelong uh a uh, uh, negative uh, influence or negative impairment in uh, an person's life that's why it uh, is very important and a very imperative uh, part that we give importance to mental health initiative in whatever field we are working uh just just a brief on uh, why mental health is uh, very important this is the uh, disability and death list uh, that is being prepared by who every 10 to 15 years apart and uh, earlier when we were in our school days in the mid 90s or or the last decade early 2000s it was hiv which was very much prevalent a lot of advocacy was done to prevent hiv and it has come down to the 10th rank in 2020 if you can see and then again heart disease diabetes uh, stroke which were which we are very much aware of but we can see the number two position is being occupied by depression which is quite uh, uh, quite alarming and uh, i have not expanded this uh, list and it says that by 2040 or by the middle 2040s and 50s depression anxiety and stress will occupy the number one position so see you can uh, you can just imagine how alarming the uh, mental health situation will be uh, again some of the statistics in the next few slides 2005 we, we indians had 60 million patients suffering from many mental health disorders but the latest uh, survey in 2016 that that means in 11 years time there were 90 million more added to that population 150 million indians aged above 18 that is the ad, after adult would suffered from any mental health disorders and 7.3 pe- uh, percent out of those were aged 13 to 17 years uh, there is always a myth that children do not suffer or adolescent do not suffer from emotional or behavioral or mental health disorder which is totally a myth but the fact is that again 20% of children and adolescent do suffer from a uh, diagnosable mental illness again which are under diagnosed and under treated so uh, the mental health issues of children and adolescent is a thing that has to be taken care of again um uh, 50% of illnesses Uh, begin before the age of 18 and uh, 14 that is before the teenagers and uh, uh, later on we will see that in the college age group that is the early adulthood um, by the age of 25 75% of the mental illnesses begin so coming to uh, today's uh, uh, main participants the students uh, which uh, are, are are in the middle phase or in the early phase of the college life what is college life basically college life starts at the start of very early adulthood Uh, you have ended your uh, late you are in your late adolescent period almost 18 19 or early 20s so that is the period which is known as the early adulthood period and uh, some defining changes take place during this period you have resolved whatever adolescent crisis you had your childhood crisis and you start taking a major social roles you give opinions to your families you take responsibilities your family in your families you take social responsibilities say you have a marriage of your cousin or one of your elder members of your family you begin to tend to take some of the responsibilities of this marriage you you tend to have a independent feeling you come out of your home you stay in your hostels 
and in a way gradually you evolve into an adult self and then again your intimacies begin you uh, tend to find most of us find our uh, life partners in this age age when we start college and then um, most importantly you start exploring your careers your job opportunities in the future and uh, by the end of college life in our indian culture most of us get married uh, basically the girls which is obviously changing now it is and so as i have told you, uh, already told we, we develop a sense of self sufficiency and independent nature and finally most importantly self resiliency self resiliency which will be uh, spoken up by jayesh in the leg, next lecture it is the way we cope up with uh, small minor uh, stresses in life without involving our parents we tend to resolve some of the issues uh, within ourselves or with the help of other uh, our friends or teachers and not involving our parents or our seniors and that's how we cope with uh, various changes and adversities in our life and um, so you we in our college life we begin to ask uh, certain questions to our ourselves uh, whether uh, that set of changes which i have just told uh, has come up on your personality you tend to ask whether you have developed a sense of independent self you tend to ask yourself that yes am i being able to solve certain problems am i being handle life am i being able to handle the life situations am i being able to form relationship of mutuality and equality this is what uh, where empathy and altruism comes empathy is uh, sensing the feelings of others sensing the emotions of others Uh, am i being able to sense others emotion and help them altruism means is a set of positive uh, mental health activity that is being uh, caring in nature being helpful in nature so all these changes comes to your personality and then again as i have already told you give opinions to your family members you give take responsibilities where an adult work identity comes out you you uh, tend to have certain characters and traits in your personality like uh, whatever sense of independence sense of altruism empathetic feeling and again uh, whether you are able to form adult friendship not that clinging type of friendship you had in childhood dot nagging type of friendship or even per se relationship between opposite sex that a uh, more uh, sort of a mature uh, sort of friendship uh, in nature uh, this brings us to the concept of millennium students where most of uh, you must be aware of what millennium students are and uh, for those who are not aware millennium students are those children who are born in the mid 80s or the mid 90s which we all are uh, i am also a millennium su student or a millennium uh, uh, child because uh, uh, and millennium students has a set of both good characters and a set of both bad characters good in the way uh, because millennium students were uh, were pushed in such a way we were pushed in by such a way we are protected by our parents in such a way that they kept us from every possible kept uh, us a uh, kept um, um, or they did not involve us in most of the family issues most of the family problems so they nurtured us in the most protective environment right and uh, they have we have been raised in a uh, in a society where uh, uh, where we uh, tend to see ourselves and our family members as the most important self uh, self esteem or self being we are uh, taught what not to do what to what to do in perspective with the societal uh, uh, or the morality principles right so uh, uh, in a way uh, since we were over protected most of us uh, are not being able to tend to solve the problems ourselves that is the bad side but what is the good side the good side is that most of us have been pressurized in so many ways because of a uh, high competitive career that we have been put into tuitions we have been put into most of us uh, in our childhood if you remember we will be put into dancing classes music classes sports classes and what not apart from our studies so we in a way sort of way we have been juggled between all those sorts of uh, career opportunities that we uh, ourselves have been impinged upon how to handle stresses so that is the bad side and good side of the millennium students right so in college life again uh, it's an exciting period of life definitely you come out of your home you stay in a hostel you find new roommates uh, it's it's quite exciting you have a tend of independence you tend to uh, manage your own pocket money you tend to manage your own uh, financial accounts obviously uh, with the support of your parents how how much to ex ex uh, uh, spend on your hangouts how much to spend on movies how much to spend on your eating habits 
so again and the demands of um, uh, the uh, academic career your job related career your presentations your uh, your uh, uh, projects so it's a lot of uh, uh, it's a huge lot of uh, stressful situations that uh, and demanding situations that you have to face right and uh, since we are millennium students since childhood we are in a way incorporated into the stressful situations but again since we are cushioned and uh, protected from our parents uh, some of us may not be able to adjust to that lifestyle so stress is all the more normal in any college life uh, it starts early nowadays uh, than the college life and uh, is what is the word that needs to be kept in mind to uh, adapt to stress so what is adjustment it is the individual's capacity or the learning ways or behavior to cope up with any situation right so you need to adjust to whatever situation you are put into to beat that stress and stress is uh, quite normal but uh, it's easier said than done most of us cannot handle the stress and uh, because of various issues vulnerability issues genetics personality and since uh, when somebody is not able to adjust not able to uh, cope up with the stress definitely emotional and mental adjustment are going to happen and this leads to various a uh, hell lot of psychological problems and mental health issues right so these are the factors that can lead to stresses in a college life relationship issues home sickness peer pressure right loneliness some of uh, some of you might believe uh, staying in a single room in a pg that causes a loneliness obviously academic demands and future career stress are number one in most of your uh, most of the students life financial issues you have spent so much of money to get admitted in the college hostel fees that trips a lot of knowledge most of you have guilt in your feeling that yes i am spending a lot of money of my parents i should perform well otherwise they will feel bad and uh, most of the girls have this body image concern that uh, why am i not attractive that my Uh, those uh, that uh, that guy is giving more uh, importance to my friend rather than me so uh, those sort of body image concerns are more common with the uh, girls nowadays it's common with uh, men also because men are tended to be known as metrosexual uh, men nowadays and again the issues of drug alcohol those comes up in hostel life and uh, once you get, tend to get the feeling of independent nature obviously bullying is a huge part in school life but obviously bullying is also present in college life too and so whatever may be the adjustment issues if you are not being able to cope this is just as example i am giving if you are not being able to uh, cope with the stresses you have adjustment issues it will lead to difficulties in your academic coursework then you will have poor grades then you will use alcohol or other uses of drugs and uh, this is just i am using the word alcohol it might be anything it might be cigarette smoking it might be cannabis smoking and most importantly nowadays screen addiction or internet addiction which is huge so what basically the root cause of this addiction is to get away from all these stressors in life you tend to find out some way or the other way you to find euphoria and to relieve those stresses so obviously alcohol a uh, gaming addiction uh, internet addiction it might be tiktok issues it might be whatsapp texting sexting whatever issues those give you some temporary euphoria and temporary relief from the stressors so when you tend to increasingly use it what happen there is something known as tolerance earlier one cigarette or one uh, uh, one uh, puff of cannabis is, will give uh, someone a bit of uh, relief from stressors and when he continuously uses it it will gradually increase one puff won't give you that euphoria and ultimately you tend to take two three puffs that gradually increases to 10 or 20 cigarettes per day so that is known as tolerance so ultimately increasing use damages the brain and it says that uh, internet addiction or gaming addiction or whatever screen addiction that might be any mobile phone addiction or uh, laptop addiction Uh, damages the same parts of the brain that uh, drugs uh, drugs also damages so ultimately apart from the physical uh, uh, physical injury that is causing you uh, you tend to damage your neurons of the brain and ultimately this leads to another set of mental health issues so um, then again you will have relationship issues so this continues like a cycle and ultimately this will cause a lot of stress stress will obviously lead to anxious personality anxiety and ultimately it will lead to depression suicide etc so it's again a cycle that is going on 
so yes obviously mental health issues in college are very much imperative and impetus must be given on this subject and uh, just to give you a brief idea of what the statistics in college campus is as i have already told 75% of mental health condition begins by the age of 24 that is by uh, the middle uh, that is by the early adulthood and most of us have depression in our college life most of us has anxiety in our college life but most importantly if you can see the last line only 34% seeks help from a prof professional that is very much disturbing this is the bitter truth why do not why we, we people keep suffering from mental health issues and do not uh, take help because obviously number one the stigma factor is there the discrimination is there the negative opinions from the public uh, what will people say if i seek help from a psychiatrist what will people say if i uh, seek help from a clinical psychologist or oh, they will tell that i am going insane and then i am going mad all these issues are there which keeps people away from seeking help and so and the negative impact carries on throughout his adult life which is very very uh, harmful so uh, uh, that is why only one third of uh, people uh, suffering from mental illness do seek help so it is quite disturbing and uh, yes 30 percent of college students suffer from depression uh, if you can see the uh, last image the uh, suicide it is the third leading cause of death in people aged between 15 to 24 that is a huge issue. Suicide is itself a webinar in uh, uh, in, in its uh, own uh, uh, own forum. So uh, we know what suicide is, what causes ultimately stress, anxiety, depression will lead to the fatal, uh, unwanted, unfortunate event of suicide. Uh, so yes, uh, there are mental health crises in college, and you should take care of your emotional well-being, and that is the that is of utmost important nowadays and that is the number one goal you should have apart from your studies uh, so this this lecture is just to guide you and make you aware of the certain subtle signs of what might be causing you or what uh, are the features that may lead you to think that yes i am having uh, yeah, am i audible yeah uh, that uh, 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 I might be suffering from stress or I might be having anxiety or depressive features. So uh, this is not just for yourself, but also to make you aware and so that you also can be advocacies of this mental health awareness lecture and uh, you can also help your friends, your family members uh, or anyone near and dear to one. So um, whatever I am going to speak is of the common mental illnesses, I am keeping aside the uh, severe mental or the serious mental illnesses like the schizophrenia or bipolar disorders. But yes, these are commonly found in a student's life, stress, anxiety, depression, panic, grief, post-traumatic stress, etc. So basically all will have the uh, 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 most of the similar features which can uh, uh, in the coming slides we will be knowing which are known as internalizing or externalizing features. So stress, 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 what is stress? It's it's the inability to cope with a threat. It might be real. Real means for say example, uh, uh, your dad is a businessman, uh, he has got ill, he is not being able to send you money properly. So that is a stress for you that how will I handle my resources, financial resources for this month. But again, you have to cope that yes, uh, he has send me less amount of money so i'll uh, channelize it only in my food and studies i'll not go for movies for a month so that is how one needs to cope and adjust and imagine say for example uh, you are sick and you are being hospitalized prior to your exams now you have one you are discharged and one week left so you have imaginary stress that yes i did not prepare well for my exams how will i uh, perform in my exams if i don't perform well i'll fail i'll not get the job i'll not be able to sit in my campus interview so that is imagine it might be a positive way also it might you might be doing good in your studies you might clear the semester by studying only one week also so that is a imagined stress so both real and imagined threat can cause stress in a body and it leads to poor health and uh, injury means it can lead to both psychological and physical injury mm -hmm. so uh, uh, all these issues can lead to stress and when stress is excess coupled with the poor coping skills the personality factor of an individual and the vulnerability factor that is the genetics if you have prior mental illness in your family so this can lead to ultimately anxiety depression and suicide which again hampers your personality and ultimately this again is a uh, cycle which will again hamper your studies your relationship your career 
etc uh these are the features that uh, are usually present when somebody is in stress there will be bodily features will be muscle irritations breathlessness fatigue mentally one will be very much worried he will have uh, nightmares he will have negativities in his mind he will be indecisive behaviorally we might go for again substance abuse we'll have sleep disturbances we'll have loss of appetite and emotionally we'll have mood swings we'll have depression we'll have features of anxiety irritability etc so uh, the next few slides are very much important these are very commonly found and uh, we all as uh, uh, all as uh, uh, all should be aware of what this internalizing and externalizing behavior are uh, it will be helpful in the awareness of our wants feelings and also if we can see someone having those feelings then you can help internalizing is when somebody internalizes his feelings and and does not express for say example he will be very much withdrawn he will keep himself isolated he will have low mood or he'll have uh, mood swings he'll have all the bodily complaints he will have poor appetite he will have sleep disturbances and um, he'll have diminished activity diminished pleasure in uh, uh, whatever he used to enjoy listening songs going out etc he'll be easily uh, uh, fatigued he'll have loss of energy he'll just lie down in the bed all day a uh, poor concentration again uh, uh, yeah. so uh, if you have friends like this you will be obviously rejecting him that he he does not interact with us let him keep us beside and let's go ahead with our plans we will not include him this time so again rejection by peers and he'll be extremely disorganized his whole uh, day to day activities will go haywire and externalizing in behavior that people will show that yes they are suffering and they are in uh, in need of help and they are uh getting some emotional disturbance he'll be very disrespectful uh, he will be very uh, disrespectful to his seniors to your uh, to you as friends he will break rules he'll be inattentive aggressiveness and irritability are the number one factors that comes when uh, in the externalizing behavior he'll have anger outbursts he'll be uh, suddenly he'll be breaking things and he'll have extreme stubbornness uh these are all the negative things about stress but is there something good about stress yes stress is very much normal and it's present in everybody's life if you if you, if you see backwards it's it's called the deserts right so it's like a, a bitter sweet thing in our life so we need to have stress for our optimum performance if you can see this uh, graph if you don't have any stress we'll just be very uh, poorly motivated in whatever activities we are so it will lead to low performance if you have optimum level of Uh, um, uh, stress it will lead to the best performance. And again, if you have too much stress in our life, it is detrimental to our career. So, if threat to life or stress is very frequent, is very intense, and is very prolonged, it's high time and is alarming sign that you need to seek professional help. And uh, one thing to remember: this is a bit of uh, irony that. everybody has stress the only person who does not stress have stress are those who are resting in peace so when you rest in peace you won't have any stress so until you rest in peace you will definitely have stress right so uh, the next few slides just two three slides left i'll just give you some brief tips how to get away uh, relieve yourself from uh, anxiety and stress i'll not go into the hardcore issues of uh, medicines or the pharmacotherapy which is beyond the scope of this webinar nor i'll go into the details of cognitive behavioral therapy and other uh, therapies and uh, counseling that is given by the clinical psychologist and uh, this is just uh, uh, some of the positive uh, tips which we can practice in our day to day life to uh, keep ourselves at bay with stress so first of all we need to identify our pessimistic thoughts our uh, bad thoughts our negative thoughts and also need to identify our stressful event what causes our stress in our relation in our academics and how to uh, swim through that negative thoughts is what's more important to develop a optimistic sets of uh, thoughts and habits is what is important so how to promote those optimistic thinking is number one we should always see this setbacks as temporary say for example i gave you a uh, example of your uh, parents one of your parents getting sick you've been sent less amount of money as pocket money 
so this is a temporary it, it should not be stressed upon that oh yes for the coming next few months what will happen to my uh, hang out what will happen to my parties how will i go down you should see all the setbacks as temporary and you should not generalize your setbacks and your adverse events in life to every aspect of your life right you may be having difficulties in your relationship so you should not generalize it to your relationship with uh, uh, those adverse events with uh, in, uh, in relationship with your studies or with your financial life or with your job oriented life so you should dismiss this problems to one aspect and not generalize to the whole aspect of your life one very important thing is we catastrophize our negative events and we blame it yourself oh it is it was my bad luck oh it was my destiny that i am going through this no it should not be and secondly most importantly uh, we should always practice gratitude gratitude is what even if we have one positive event in our day we should always focus on that and reinforce that positive event in our life rather than concentrating all the negative events that took place in our day right most importantly we should seek help be it professional help or help from your families your teachers your friends it's not a sign of weakness it's not a sign of cowardness to seek help but it's a sign of strength right certain other points is that we should not expect perfection from everybody not ourselves we are not perfect individuals there is a old saying that all the fingers in our hands are not of the same size and uh, you know all in so we are not perfect in everything and nor others are perfect in anything to meet your expectation so we should not keep too much expectation in our life and uh, that we will achieve this mass marks we will uh, get this job and i'll uh, i'll i'll earn so much money so we should have realistic hopeful and optimistic expectation in our life rather than burden ourselves with unrealistic op uh, unrealistic dreams burden ourselves with unrealistic responsibilities take those till what much you can bear not go beyond the point which you can handle or which you can take some other points we should go easy with criticisms criticisms will be in our class will be in our relation will be within our family members we should go very go uh, go very easy with the criticism if someone criticizes you take the positives why he has criticized you was there a really mistake in your part and if there was really a mistake accept this mistake and try to correct it the next time and if what not your mistake and he criticized way beyond what was needed to be just let it go okay don't keep it in your ego ego is one thing that you need need to get away with right so that helps with uh, going easy with criticism always be prepared to apologize even if it is not your mistake be the first one to say sorry in any of the events you take and uh, as i have already told avoid unnecessary competitions okay that leads to quite a lot of stress and uh, anxiety uh, you should have realistic optimistic and uh, uh, well directed goals which you can carry on which you can handle and uh, compete with yourself rather than your fame friends okay and uh, and be prepared that failures are part of life always plan b and c for your life if plan a is not working go for plan b go for plan c and that is why in the earlier slide i have shown that view change in your life as normal if plan a is not working go for plan b that is a change in your life you should be flexible enough to change yourself so as to you can handle the challenges in your life right and um, i have already told what is uh, uh, recognizing and accepting uh, personal limits and uh, appreciate yourself as well as others whatever good deed you have done just appreciate reinforce yourself that yes this is the positive thing i have done today in spite of all the negativities around me appreciate yourself A appreciating self is the number one thing that brings happiness in oneself as well as appreciate others that if they have done something good to you right um uh other things which is very much important obviously time management is important it can be done by prioritizing priority uh, giving priorities to your important work rather than wasting time on the unnecessary things that will again uh, uh, help you to cope up with uh, stressful activities 
we need to set appropriate goals and identify only the necessary activities and again ask for help whenever in need uh, most importantly get plenty of rest sleep is very much important sleep is the number one thing that helps us to keep our emotions at bay uh, limit your uh, substance abuse alcohol drinks most importantly exercise even a simple deep breathing exercise can help you a lot meditation mindfulness meditation which helps you to keep uh, yourself with the present situation with the current situation is very much helpful which i guess jayesh will be telling yoga is one of the things that is very much helpful nowadays and uh, again to stress upon deep breathing exercises is very much uh, helpful in uh, uh, coming out with the stressful situation whenever you are stressed up in life and uh, there are uh, other uh, uh, higher grades of deep breathing exercises like the jpmr uh, which are the progressive muscle relaxation technique which are uh, uh, given by clinical psychologists to the patients of anxiety so these are some of the important issues uh, that you can take up yourself and most importantly do something you enjoy it is very very much important day in today's today's work today's competitive life today's uh hectic schedule always try to find out a hobby it might be gardening it might be playing an instrument it might be painting it might be poetry writing it might be uh, reading a novel but always do something in the day which gives you enjoyment and which gives you a recreational feeling so that is very important last slide uh is easier said than done we can practice this issues but people who cannot uh who cannot come up with stress we cannot who cannot cope with stress and come out of anxiety by practicing all those things please 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 do not stigmatize yourself and remain inside your house please come out we mental health professional is not that i am the only psychiatrist or jayesh is the only clinical psychologist there are many in guwahati city there are many in india please seek help of uh, professionals so that you come out with flying colors and that's why i have put up this slide depression let's talk this was one of the themes of uh, world health day in april every year a disease is taken into perspective by who to uh, bring awareness into the issue and uh, issues which are important so two three years back they uh, they gave importance to depression let's talk means please communicate whatever difficulties you are having speak up openly speak up uh, in a very prudent way to your friends it might be your teacher it might be your uh, sibling it might be one of your parents it might be your roommate and also find out it's not that you might be suffering if you see someone having those internalizing or externalizing features just ask them what is happening to you you know studies say that only ventilating and expressing your uh, negative feelings and your bad thoughts Uh, helps a lot in coming out of depression and anxiety so it's not that only mental health professionals uh, as we are we can help uh, uh, treatment can start right away in your hostel room right away in the staff room in the classroom or at your home please come out and speak openly about whatever negative feelings you are have, uh, having that is why uh, it's known as let's talk there is a beautiful video in youtube you might be looking at uh, uh, when you have time it's known as dubara pucho if someone does not let their feelings once ask them again and again what they are going through right and um, obviously there is hope positive hope because pain always and if someone is at the tunnel right now it's just a temporary tunnels are always temporary and you'll have definitely have light at the end of the tunnel just a passing thought the last slide uh, everybody knows who john lennon was right he was one of the beatles guy uh, when he was very young his mother asked um, he just told this phrase to his teacher when i was 5 years old my mother always told me that happiness was the key to life when i went to school my teachers asked what i wanted to when i grew up i wrote happy and then the teacher replied that they told me i did not understand the assignment and then i replied back and i told them that they didn't understand life that means whatever you do in life in future being a hod of a department being uh, the executive of a company being the uh, entrepreneurship uh, uh, who are uh, interested in entrepreneurship be it in a business be it in a professional life whatever little thing or whatever thing you do at the end you all should always be happy that's the most important thing emotional well being and happiness is the key to be successful in life it's not that uh, 
successful uh, people are very wealthy are very uh, career oriented but success is now it is in matter in how happy one is and, uh, that, that's what i wanted to tell and another thing i just end with uh, one key thing that buffers away from lot of stressors and anxiety is what resilience and jayeshree will be speaking on resilience how to uh, inculcate the uh, beautiful habit of resiliency in yourself which will help you to cope up with stress thank you so just uh, madam was saying manjusha madam we uh, all three my dad is a psychiatrist we all three have a organization known as mon niramoy it's his initiative uh, uh, dr jayanta das's initiative we do all this obviously now the situation demands for a webinar but when the situation was normal we go to colleges we go to uh, various uh, social forums and do mental health activities so that is mon niram thank you i'll hand over the mic to manjusha ma'am and then jayeshri thank you and just uh, one sentence uh, whatever little uh, knowledge or whatever little information i have given i hope that this will be helpful for all the participants and they can uh, raise their voice against mental health awareness and please remember the internalizing and externalizing features and uh, please help yourself and help others to come out of the mental health issues thank you thank you dr anvesh sardas it's really wonderful to know about mon niramoy and we would uh, want our students to be associated uh, with this organization definitely, definitely. and uh, regarding your presentation it was uh, very wonderfully explained very beautifully explained and i think i want to say one thing that the first take away of the first session is how to make beautiful slides so this is the first learning for our students the i'm really very very impressed by the slides which are very much uh, informative and very beautifully made thank and you two other takeaways for our millennium students as you said uh i found uh, i have noted down two very important takeaways from the first session they are uh adaptation to change adaptability i keep telling my students uh we know about iq we know about, know about eq intelligence quotient emotional quotients but now everything will depend on our adjustment how we can adjust and adapt to any situations so this is the first take away and another take away for the students and even for the faculties for everybody is spiritual journey spiritual health if we can maintain our spiritual health if we also have a spiritual journey apart from a personal journey our professional journey then it will be possible for us to be happy at the end so thank you once again dr anish shot das thank you ma'am uh, now i would like to hand over the next session to jay shri das a very good morning to all of you am i audible very much okay um first of all i would like to thank uh, my beloved sister goryo kibba for initiating the first conversation uh, to conduct this webinar i would also like to thank uh, dr manjusha ma'am who very sweetly with her own courteous gesture and a very polite way you know uh, did all the um, work behind today's webinar i would uh, like to thank the department of uh, humanities uh, and also the team of assam downtown university uh, it's not that the first time i have uh, come to know uh, about the webinars but uh, uh, it's always a pleasure knowing uh, that you people work as a team and it's uh, it's a very positive feeling for outsiders like me so i'm really uh, today very grateful that i could be a part of this webinar um thank you for this opportunity i'll just start off with my presentation
Yes. So uh, as uh, Dr. Anveshak has already spoken about anxiety, about stress. So one factor that, uh, you know, really buffers against uh, this kind of uh, reactions is resilience. So uh, we were given the topic about resilience and uh, how one can, you know, bounce back to normal uh, in context of the present scenario. Um, however, I guess, uh, and I believe strongly that if we learn this quality of resilience, how to, you know, build it, it will be not only helpful for us during this pandemic, but it will also be helpful for us, you know, in the um, coming times, whenever we face a traumatic or a negative event. Uh, I would like all of you to observe this picture first. And uh, I will get back to this picture again in the last in the, towards the end of my session. Just have a close look into this picture first. All right. I'm moving to the next slide. Uh, I would first of all like to discuss a case uh, that came to our clinic. Uh, this was a child uh, who came to us because of uh, uh, poor uh, concentration, because his grades failed considerably. Um, he uh, had low self-esteem. He also was constantly bullied in you know, class. Um, he used to get fatigued. And then children, as you know, they cannot explain about the, you know, the physical, the mental problems uh, properly. They are more about uh, experiencing or uh, the physical or somatic. Like if they have a problem, they will, uh, you know, if they have anxiety, they would, they, they would not be able to express what this anxiety is. So they would rather say, I have a pain in my stomach or I have a pain in my body. So, you know, with somatic complaints, most of our cases come. And this child, uh, we got to know that his parents divorced, uh, you know, uh, last year. Uh, so um, uh, these are the symptoms he had come up with, which uh, we uh, feel that the child is not, you know, getting uh, into the uh, thing of divorce of the parents. So he, that is how he's reacting, uh, you know, mentally. Uh, now, this is the case scenario two. Uh, here, what happened was, the child of a father, he died, uh, the father died last year, uh, but this child is brought up by a single working mother and uh, she is a busy lady because she is also a working lady and she also has, apart from her son, she has her sick grandparents, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, sick uh, grandparents or uh, uh, at home to cater to. Moreover, the child is also, you know, uh, is very good with homework and he excels in school. He, his attention span is great. And even if somebody bullies him or even if somebody wants to, you know, um, bring him down, uh, he never let any negative comments, you know, uh, come across uh, him. So this is the case scenario too. Now, if you compare both the cases, what do we see? We see resiliency. So now, why is it important to talk about resilience? What is resilience? Uh, resilience, uh, it helps us to develop mechanisms so that we can protect ourselves again, against any kind of negative experiences or traumatic experiences that we might come across in life. Secondly, it also helps us to maintain the balance in our lives when we have, whenever we face the stressful periods. And thirdly, it protects us from development of any mental health issues. That's why I told it works as a buffering agent uh, for developing any kind of a mental health issue. When I talk about mental health issue, I mostly uh, talk about anxiety and depression, that too being the most common, you know, mental illnesses. Let's, uh, we today, our kind of presentation is not uh, going into the deeper mental illnesses like schizophrenia or bipolar. Now, what is resilience? You know, our life is not a bed of roses. Uh, we always have ups and downs. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have to face certain traumatic events. And those traumatic events can have a lasting impact on us, like, you know, the, the death of a loved one or, you know, an uh, accident that really altered the entire life situation of ours or a serious, serious illness, illness we, you know, came across. Now, each change, you know, whatever change we have that affects people differently. Like, uh, you know, suppose a child, um, 
you know he's always uh, uh, abused in the class by a teacher example um, uh, and the same teacher also abuses another child in another classes in uh, in another class but one child might take it very lightly telling that the teacher always behaves like that but the other child might take it internally and might also lead to depression and eventually you know he or she might also commit suicide so therefore a single event can be taken up differently by different people uh, yet people generally they uh, you know they adapt well over time and why they can adapt well because mostly this is uh, due to the resilience now the term resilience it comes from the latin word resilio and it means to jump back you know so uh, this is the definition that was given uh, by the american psychological association it says resilience is the process of adapting well in different kind of trauma adversity you know tragedy threats or sources or any significant sources of stress uh, the stress can crop up from the family uh, or family and relationship problems you know serious health problems or workplace and financial stress stresses now uh resilience it involves bouncing back from a difficult experience like suppose you're going on a straight line you went negative you went down uh resilience will the quality of resilience will help you to come back to the straight line again okay when you come back when you bounce back what happens is that along with the bouncing back there are a lot of profound you know there, there's a lot of growth personal growth that happens uh, within you and also that uh, also enhances your life to some extent however you need you need to understand that if one is resilient it does not mean that you will never be experiencing difficulty or you know stress or, or any kind of trauma people because you know the road to resilience it's not a very smooth one it has lot of emotional distress because people who has suffered a lot of adversity or trauma in their lives they experience emotional pain and stress okay uh, while there are certain factors that might contribute uh, for some individuals to be more resilient than others but uh, it uh, you, you should not understand that resilient uh, to be a personality trait that only some people have like you know like uh, there is this personality trait called anxious avoidant personality where an anxious person will tend to avoid a lot of things okay that is a particular personality trait but resilience is not a personality trait because we all have it so what is said that personality uh, resilience is not a personality trait but it can be developed how by having uh, you know change in our behaviors in our thoughts and in our actions and it also can be learned by anyone at at any time now uh, another question that comes to our mind is why are some children more resilient than others okay so what happens is um, you know that genetics uh, has a lot of role to play here like uh, some uh, family members you see you know the parents uh, they have uh, you know this uh, they are very strong uh, emotionally for which it, it is uh, you know it uh, comes down uh, generation wise to the children and therefore they are genetically uh, you know uh, better way than other children now uh, another uh, dynamic which uh, is very important is the uh, family dynamics uh, many a times it is seen that you know uh, the family is dysfunctional uh, you know like uh, i have a case where uh, i have seen um, uh, a patient who is uh, suffering from depression but it's so sad that uh, there is this four members in the family but none of them talk to each other you know the father stays uh, in a different floor the mother stays in a different floor Uh, the sister stays in a different floor. Um, you know, she stays in a different floor. And even when they cross each other uh, over the daytime, they will be like saying hi, hello. Nothing uh, communication per se. And they will also have their food in their own rooms. So in such a uh, situation, if the child of the family suffers from any kind of mental illness, so be it anxiety, be it depression, he or she will really take time to be resilient. You know, he will have difficulty in actually understanding. or connecting to people so family dysfunction again uh, you know in terms of uh, alcoholic parents uh, we have cases where the child is suffering from anxiety because uh, the parents by the moment the evening comes they are into drinking so they have a lot of problem uh, that ways uh, 
there, there are cases where you know we get um, uh, domestic violence. Now there was this girl. Uh, I I go to different schools, uh, you know, to uh, teach uh, children on uh, emotional intelligence. Like my I'm doing a PhD on uh, social emotional intelligence. You know, so uh, so when uh, I happen to go to one of the schools, the girl. Uh, she always has to meet me after the class and she will tell me that ma'am I have to talk to you about something, ma'am I have to talk to you about something. I, uh, I gave my number, then one day she calls me up and then she tells me that ma'am I'm having a difficult time uh, because I got to know that my father is having an extramarital affair and uh, my mom got to know and there's a lot of problem in my family. She's a very bright student but what is happening is now her scores are getting down. So I told her, whom do you want me to speak to? She's like, you cannot speak to none of my parents because, you know, they will really scold me because I'm taking a thing out of the family and telling you. So I told, can I just share this with your teacher? And uh, the class teacher was a wonderful old lady. And uh, I felt get very good that, you know, she told, yes, ma'am, you can share with my class teacher. So, uh, you know, she showed me the way that, yes, there is this connection happening between the class teacher and the child where she can open up with the classes and she knows that the class teacher will keep it confidential. You know, so a family, a girl coming from a family like that uh, might also be, you know, slow in developing the resilient uh, abilities. Some children, again, are, you know, uh, in terms of life experiences, they are more, uh, uh, you know, traumatized. They, they are, uh, you know, maybe sexually uh, they are exploited in the families. Okay, they have this uh, child, a lot of child sexual abusers that has come to us. So, uh, you know, the, uh, those child children are traumatic and many of them, what happens, you know, uh, they do not know when actually the abuse happens, but later on as they grow, you know, then they have this post-trauma kind of a symptom where they recall certain episodes of uh, these abusive experiences and then they sink into anxiety, depression, guilt, feeling. So this kind of experiences, again, you know, uh, can make a child very vulnerable. Uh, but um, again, at the same time, if a child is educated about resilience in the past, in, times, in terms of life skill education, or uh, in terms of any kind of education from the parents, then I think uh, that those child can be also, you know, uh, they might have more uh, resiliency than others. Now, American Psychological Association, they focus on four main components within the concept of resilience. So when, when you think about resilience, you need to think from these four points, uh, which is uh, building connection, then uh, fostering wellness, healthy thinking, and uh, having a purpose and meaning in life. So uh, what is building connections? You need to, you know, prioritize your relationships. You need to know whom you can connect to. You know, you need to know uh, that your, uh, you know, parents understand um, what you are going through. Like uh, I had a case uh, uh, where the child came and told me in one of the sessions that, uh, ma'am, I'm, uh, uh, she's uh, having depression like teachers. But when I, when she told that, when I tend to be expressing, expressive towards my parents. Uh, they tend to ask me whether uh, have you have you taken the medicines or not. But you know, uh, but uh, they never ask me what happened. How are you doing? So I told her that day. So it's a very significant uh, you know statement you have told me, and I will definitely discuss this uh, in some of my presentations because this has really touched my heart. You know, see a girl she's suffering from depression and she wants her parents to understand what she's going through, but rather they are you know. Mm, uh, depending on the medication. So you need to connect with empathetic and understanding people who can make you understand that it's okay, you're not alone, we are with you, you just need to be strong, okay? And also need to find, you know, trust. You can find those trustworthy and compassionate individuals um, in your friends also, in your cousins also, in your colleagues also, who can validate your feelings. You know, I remember once I went to Ayasundra um, uh, Hospital uh, with my husband uh, because my husband, my uh, husband uh, had a fracture in his leg. So then I happened to meet two ladies. So I thought they had to be sisters. So I just, uh, I have this habit of talking to people. So I went up to them and I was like, I, it's really nice to see both of you talking so nice. Are you sisters? So she, they are like, no, we are not sisters. We are colleagues. 
Uh, we are retired now, but we have we have become more like friends. So I really felt good. See, such a good connection, you know. The, you know they are having. So that kind of a trustworthy and compassionate uh, uh, relationship, if you develop, you know that that other person will understand you. So that helps in you developing the resilient skills. Okay. Next is about joining a group. You can join any group, uh, be it uh, you know any um, uh, your hobby group. You know there is something you really want to, want to do, uh, something you like. Uh, you know helping animals. You can go and do that. You know something that will really give you a sense of uh, hope, sense of contentment that I'm doing something. So that ways when you join, uh, you can also join a group where you know that these people can connect. You know, I can connect with these people. The wavelength is similar. So that ways, you know, you can build your connections. Now, uh, we have to remember that wellness. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's very very important. Why? Because uh, uh, when we talk about wellness, first thing that comes to our mind is taking care of our body. See, I want to highlight on this point that most of the mental illness. Uh, problems that comes to us the first thing that they complain is about sleep disturbance okay and the second thing is about decreased appetite so these two other things appetite is how what is your interest in food intake so these uh, you know two factors are very very important when it comes to you know any kind of uh, illness uh, in terms of mental illness so therefore proper nutrition ample sleep and water intake is very important along with regular exercise you know because that helps you to develop endorphins in your body and those are you know like uh, anti depressants they are anti anxiety tablets for you okay natural tablets for you so therefore when you uh, do regular exercise you have this feel good factor when you have this feel good factor you know that your endorphins are being released so that is how you can you know step uh take care of your body and uh, you know work uh, in the area of wellness another thing which is very important which i have started with my patients um, uh, and um, also some of my cousins uh, because i am the agony aunt so whenever they have a problem uh, they always call me up so and i love to help them because i i love the fact that they are reaching out to me you know because sometimes i really feel bad if i know that the person is suffering but still they are not finding it comfortable to come to me so that uh, really sets me back but uh, you know uh, this mindfulness is what it's about you being aware okay you being aware about yourself what you're doing like now i'm talking to you i'm you know having a discussion so i'm like 100% focused on you but if i'm talking and i'm also thinking in the back of the mind what am i going to do after the session am i going to cook or am i going to have a juice that is i'm not being mindful about this session okay so mindfulness can start by anything it can be just a meaningful conversation you are having with somebody maybe your mother maybe your sister okay maybe your father you are just sitting you are talking but you are listening to the conversation like i had a session with one of my patients um, so when i asked her uh, what are you thinking so she is like ma'am as you are talking i am thinking whether i'll get a cab or not so i said see this is not how it works do you understand so this mindfulness is very very important there are lot of apps that uh, can help you to uh, you know go through it but just to practice mindfulness you have to just start it uh, in the beginning uh, just start it at home i always tell you know mental health concepts concepts are very basic okay uh, which we because of our maybe lack of time maybe lack of appreciation of life we don't um, cater to but we can start small things from home itself like you can practice mindfulness without looking into any apps any books you can start it at your at your home with the conversation you are having with your own ones even for now itself and it's not that you have to be mindful entire time just you practice mindfulness you know you just take a time uh, in the day that okay now i'm having a conversation over the phone let me be really mindful like i see when when people walk or jog uh, i see people talking and then walking that is not mindfulness walking okay because when you like you know i have seen for myself when i run when i uh, listen to music when i run and i'm when i'm mindful about what is what are the changes happening in my body it gives me motivation to work harder okay like you know okay my my, my i'm i having this burning sensation in my thighs so okay fine that means it's working so i need to work, you know run a, uh, you know maybe a few minutes more so when you're mindful it gives you that extra push okay so therefore practicing mindfulness is very very important 
also along with mindfulness practicing gratefulness you know uh, gratefulness or gratitude uh, uh, we i think all of us have started doing this post the pandemic or during the pandemic because uh, uh, we i think uh, for me it happened at, uh, at least i was really grateful about the morsel of food i was eating about the roof i was having when i saw the migrant laborers okay so you know this 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 things gave me an insight that yes you know i should be grateful of things i otherwise took granted for so therefore be grateful of whatever you have it can be just as simple as you know a cup of tea you are having it can be as simple as a ray of sunshine you know uh, you're getting uh, it can be just experiencing the rain you know so this small small things i always i always speak on the basics always so mm, always try to practice gratefulness at least one thing you're grateful about every day so that will also foster wellness not only in the body but also in the mind now uh, many people they have a tendency to you know mask their pain with the help of alcohol or drugs or substances but i please let me tell you those are temporary solution to your problems those are not the permanent solution so teach your body to manage stress teach yourself how you should come out of this stress because if you take the shortcuts you will never gain success so avoid this negative outlets instead give more importance to managing your stress in a more productive way now uh, it's also very important to find a purpose in your life you know how to help others uh, uh, suppose you trying to help a child you know uh, like you know there there's this now this uh, i really like it in your uh, birthdays you can really fund a child you know uh, from unicef so that is how let them have a edu one year education you know one year of one year of food uh, so those kind of uh, thing makes you feel good that you have done something for somebody okay it can be as simple as you know i really admire a girl uh, she uh, during the pandemic she went all over the guwahati town to actually you know provide food to the dogs that gave her a sense of purpose and it was also appreciated by others and that helped her to move on you know so you can find your own purpose of helping people helping animals helping you know people those who are in need even for that matter helping your friend okay if you see that your friend is not uh, you know is not uh, in a good uh, uh, spirit you can just talk to him or her next thing is being proactive you need to have uh, an understanding and uh, of your problems and also accept your problems so that you can have this self discovery then what can i do about the problem in my life so you need to accept the problem and you have to you know break the problem into small small pieces so that it is attainable so that you can reach the you know goal whichever goal you are making also when i talk about goal it's very important to make realistic goals it to hopo na lage i mean okay sorry so this should not be that uh, um you you are uh, your goal is like you know very superficial you know the goal should be realistic uh, like you know we see many patients they are coming to us with goals that are very superficial it's not uh, us is the parents also who feel that the goals are very superficial and then we know that the child has slipped into you know manic or hypomania like symptoms so you need to have realistic goals okay so that you can uh, have this small accomplishment and you can accomplish you can you know reach that goal okay and then always uh, i always tell my patients uh, you know whenever a traumatic incident happens you know that uh, traumatic incident has lot of things to teach us so that anyway uh, you know if we tend to understand maybe at the time when it happens we really curse the god so why did it happen to me why has it happened but maybe later when you have adapted to it you feel thankful that okay fine maybe because of this this is what has happened to me okay you tend to grow in some respect as a result of a struggle so therefore that also helps you to find the purpose in life now uh, this is very very important and which is touched upon but i always tell this that you know uh, your thoughts make about a lot of difference in your life now i'll just give you an example suppose you and your friend are going in a uh, train um, in the, uh, the uh, you know in the dark uh, it was night and you both are traveling suddenly the train stopped in the middle of nowhere okay uh, your friend is very casual he or she is thinking that you know maybe the signal is not there that is why we are waiting the train is waiting on the other hand you are thinking oh god we might be under attack by terrorist or somebody 
so what will happen the moment you think like that your you'll get anxious right you'll get anxious you'll have heart palpitations so do you see the changes whereas your friend who was very cool who thought that no maybe just a signal he was very cool he did not have any kind of emotions so therefore whatever you think however you think makes all the difference actually so it will make you also feel how you feel it will also how you react that will also happen so therefore your thinking if you have healthy thoughts you will not be having anxiety or depression because in anxiety and depression mostly it is to do with unhealthy thoughts okay uh this is very important when you talk about healthy thoughts is keeping things in perspective uh you uh, always we always tend to see the uh, thing from one side of an angle but always try to see things from the other part of the uh, you know uh, angle also like suppose something happens suppose just as simple as suppose you had a conversation with your friend and you really did not like it so you always think that i am i was correct i should have done this but if you take some time and if you think from the other person's point of view other person's perspective you might understand or see a different point which otherwise you could uh, you know did not uh, you know uh, uh, see it. so therefore you should always try to change how you interpret or respond to uh, uh, event okay so um, and also you should remember that whatever has happened to you it is not an indication of how your future will go and it's not that you are not you are helpless you should think in a different way that yeah maybe you know at immediately when you have a traumatic event you will never feel that but eventually when you see the other perspective you will come out of it so another thing about healthy uh, thought is accepting change you know certain uh, goals or ideals might not be fulfilled whenever we have a traumatic incident suppose you had a uh, dream of going abroad uh, or you know a dream of uh, studying a uh, line okay but suddenly your uh, some very uh, your family member expired okay so then you could not uh, continue with the goal so that might lead you to a lot of setback but you need to accept that you know certain circumstances cannot be changed but what can be changed is how we look into the you know uh, circumstance like therefore this it's a very important quote which says that life is about moving on accepting changes and looking forward so that it makes you more stronger and more complete so also important is maintaining a hopeful outlook because uh, you know if you're optimistic uh, you can also visualize what you want rather than you know i understand my patients don't be uh, more in the past be in the present but also not much in the future okay mostly in the present you can visualize what you want but also don't worry that whether i'll be able to face it or not not like that okay but you need to be more hopeful about it uh many a times i've already told that you know the past has lot of experiences um, uh, to be uh, you know explained uh, or past teaches us uh, lessons in a way which other or any people cannot teach us so we should always learn from our past and we should take those as the stepping blocks so that we can reach our new goals and dreams so whenever an incident happen we know that okay this has happened so i have learned this but uh, you know i always tell if you repeat the same mistakes again and again that means you're not learning from your past so at least try to learn from your past and then you know uh, to take those as stepping blocks blocks so that you can you know uh, reach new goals and dreams apart from all those uh, things uh, this uh, outside supports like positive role models uh, community resources and caring relationships also contribute for a uh, individual to have inner strengths which are what self control thinking skills you know confidence positive outlook responsibility participation like you know during this pandemic what happened um, i was i'm uh, i was working with uh, assam police uh, on telephonic uh, counseling so what happened we uh, saw many uh, you know pay, uh, parents giving us calls and asking us uh, that ma'am we really tense what to do uh, you know how to take care of our children you know initially we used to take the, uh, you know they used to go to school but now and they a uh, whole day they are at home and then we are in, we are not relaxed any moment so i'm really tense and the media is also creating a lot of problems so i uh, told them that you know if you're anxious your child will also become anxious you know many a times the children parents come to us uh, you'll be surprised to know there's this uh, couple who came to us the child was like really young okay she was like only in nursery 
So she want, they wanted me to check the IP of the child because they wanted her to become an IS officer. Okay, and then <laughs> they were really they were really anxious that will my child become an IS officer or not. I was shocked. I had to give. I was like, I will not do any IQ test. I'll rather do counseling on both of you. Okay, so you know this kind of uh, uh, expectations or this kind of sometimes the parents are so anxious about the performance of the child. You know, the mother comes up with a lot of performance anxiety of the child. So then if the child sees that the mom or the dad is anxious, then they also inculcate those anxiety skills. Okay. So therefore, positive role model is very important for the child to become, you know, more confident or have a more positive outlook. And then caring relationship. If the child knows that, yes, I am, I'm feel, I feel loved. Now, I had another uh, patient that um, came to me who told me, Ma'am, all my needs are being fulfilled. I go to best tuitions. I get the best of things in my life. But when I cry, my parents never come and ask me once why I'm crying. Do you understand? So she's feeling very lost. Okay. So therefore, if the parents uh, make the child feel loved, if the parents make them feel that, yes, you are understood, you are accepted, you know, then the child can also come up, you know, and explain to the parents. Many a time the parent says that, Ma'am, I am the best friend of the child. When I ask the child, the child is like, I hate my father. Do you understand? The child and the father, the father thinks otherwise, the child thinks otherwise. So, and suppose the father has always been very strict or the mother has always been very strict. Do you think if a child has a problem, they will come and share? They will never share. Okay. And then the mothers uh, or the parents, they blame, they never share with us. Actually, that is where the parenting starts from the initial days only, you know, suddenly one day you cannot become a best friend. It is just a process of parenting and how eventually your children will come up to you. So that caring relationship should be nurtured since very early. Now, this is a very important model. I want you to all please uh, concentrate on this model because this will help you to understand resilience in a better way. Uh, see, whenever we have any kind of adversity, any kind of negative event, what happens is there's this decline that happens, okay? This decline that happens and we immediately go to the survival mode. And in the survival mode, what happens? We have certain symptoms like physical symptoms, emotional symptoms, like anxiety, over worry, eating, sleeping, okay? Then from that, what happens? We next jump into the adaptation mode. In this adaptation mode, what happens? The brain is starting to rewire new skills, is starting to learn new skills, is start, starting to have this psychological responsibility so that he or she feels less victimized, there is more acceptance of the situation. All right. So, gradually after that, the, the, the person moves to the next uh, level, that is the recovery phase, where the new skills that has been rewired in the brain. Uh, it, it has have turned into a habit by practicing and uh, there's overall good social skills. That is how he's interacting with people. He's working with the reality, uh, the change, whatever has uh, happened is not no, no, no longer avoiding. And one important or the critical uh, thing that happens in this recovery stage is empathy, self-compassion. You tend to have a self-love. You, you know, tend to le have love for yourself. When you have this Empathy only then you can go to the next stage, that is the growth stage. Okay, so in the growth stage, what happens? You are more aware of yourself. You have a more, uh, uh, you know, mindful about yourself, about your relationship. You have a better belief about yourself. You have a better perspective about things. See, now these stages, it's not that one, uh, you know, uh, it's it's same for every individual. There are different people might take different time to reach the level of growth. But I just want you to understand that, you know, the, this, this, these are the stages uh, or the phases of the resilience model just given by uh, Patterson et al. in 2009. Now, uh, American Psychiatric Association has again given these 10 ways to build personal resilience. These are how to make connections, that is build connections with family, uh, how to have self-discovery, accepting and managing change, keeping things in perspective, taking decisive actions, moving towards goal, nurturing self-esteem, maintaining hope and positivity, taking care of oneself, and then seeing crisis as surmountable problems. I always tell my patients that, you know, if this is the problem, you need to think how to overcome it. You need to think, you know, uh, you cannot just 
surpass it you, you know uh, you have to surmount it okay so how uh, that that means how uh, you know you see the crisis as a surmountable problem that is how you have to build your resilience now this is the you know, matrix and the equation of resilience these four things uh, uh, leads to resilience this is coping how uh, you are being able to use your strengths to cope and recover for your problems and uh, how you are being um, uh, you know resilient about uh, you know and uh, how you are being very you know uh, what do you say that word um, very strong about not giving up okay uh, how you are making a sense of whatever you have learned from the past and most importantly emotional intelligence you know how you can manage your emotions you know i strongly feel more than iq eq is very very important for a better you know functioning of an individual in today's world okay how you can analyze and manage your emotions now uh, this is a very interesting concept which i got in one of the interview uh, uh, that was given by professor uh, ann maston uh, dr ann maston uh, she is uh, the professor of child development Uh, in the institute of child development at the university of minnesota she quoted this uh, in april 2020 she said that you know uh, she used the metaphor of resilience bank account she quoted that we all store up resilience but under you know uh, on dire circumstances we use that up capacity and it can that that account can get depleted resilience can get empty she also likes to recommend practices you know that uh, ranging from mindfulness or gratitude practice to other habits of health and well being like being you know getting enough sleep and eating well and staying in touch with people that you are about that you care about all in an effort to try to keep your stores your bank account of resilience will be full as needed so do you understand so we have this resilience bank account whenever we experience certain uh, negative trauma that account or uh, account uh, you know capacity can be depleted but with the practice of gratitude mindfulness healthy uh, pro lifestyle we can bring back uh, the account uh, see uh, she is the one and she also uh, uh, told about the role of resilience in the face of the current pandemic uh, see there are a lot of research she has done on resilience mostly on the resilience of children uh, ex experiencing traumatic events now uh, the things that have come up during this pandemic is that some people post the pandemic might develop post traumatic stress like symptoms okay they might be because that's the first thing they uh, you know uh, they they might happen uh, to you know experience the stress so even after the pandemic is over they might develop this stress um, many people even though uh, they have adversities but because of good support they can come out of it but lack of support make the you know people make the children or the adolescents or the uh, family members uh, you know they 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 deplete they cannot develop the resiliency many people they have entered a situation already stressed now we see a lot of people when i was doing the work of tele counseling we saw a lot of people you know uh, they uh, called us because their psychiatric medications ended you know they were stressed more stressed so those people will take more time to come out of uh, the problem and many people have experienced loss and grief during this pandemic uh, mostly what happened is uh, the sad part was they could not cremate or do the cremation function as they wanted to you know uh, um, they uh, they could not say the official goodbye to their loved ones so many a times uh, in uh, yeah, western countries they over a phone or over a letter you know just uh, they have ended their services so you know those kind of pain might uh, leave a mark on them and they might have difficulty in coming out uh, this kind of uh, you know resiliency uh, might uh, uh, be uh, you know uh, difficult uh, to this kind of people those who are suffering or those who fall into this categories might have a difficulty in uh, experiencing the bouncing back or the resilience effort soon now how can we help how can we be more resilient during this current pandemic uh, we are connecting in new ways and we are also discovering our new strengths okay so we can uh, mobilize uh, you know we can make ourselves utilize to the best in the context of this emergency 
we are discovering that we have new strengths, new reserves, and we're connecting with people in new uh, ways. Like today's webinar, we never ever imagined that we'll do a webinar in this way, you know, maybe for pre the uh, pre pandemic. So uh, therefore, we are mobilizing ourselves at different levels, and um, we are also seeing that not only us, the government levels and local levels are also mobilizing. Now, uh, this is a very important uh, term which uh, I associate with, I hope many of you associate. As I have told that this pan pandemic lockdown had brought about a lot of uh, changes in me. I did a lot of introspection. I had a lot of gratitude experiences uh, in me. And I wanted to know what was that? What was that positive thing I was ha having? You know, what ha uh, that I was experiencing that um, otherwise I did not. So this is a term called post-traumatic growth where it's a process and an outcome and it experiences a positive change in oneself as a result of the struggle with traumatic events. You know, new possibilities comes, you relate to others, you have this personal strength, appreciation of life, spiritual and existential change. Okay, so uh, as the graph shows, uh, you know, a negative event may go down, but when you bounce back post-traumatic growth more than the line, you can go upwards. That is, you know, the growth that happens pose the trauma. Now, uh, just quickly, I would, if you all have a pen and a pencil, I would like you to work on a worksheet. This is not to be done now, but later on when you are, you know, uh, maybe stressed out, you can, uh, you know, uh, practice this. Okay. So first is like, you can recognize your signs of stress. This is a resilience building uh, plan a worksheet. First, you can recognize your signs of stress. How you know, you, I always tell my patients where you feel in your body, draw the parts where you feel in your body, you know, where you feel in your body and what is a bad habit when you stress? What do you do to yourself? Like I have one um, girl who has a tendency of, you know, um, cutting self when she's very stressed. Okay. It's not a very healthy example, but uh, I'm telling you because that is, again, it goes more to uh, a thing more, more towards depression and self-harming behavior. So the, you need to recognize your signs of stress, okay? Now, second is you need to build physical hardiness. You, if you can make small changes to improve your health, like maybe better sleep, hydration, exercise, and you need to be uh, accountable to someone. If you uh, write like one ch change that I would like to make, and then who I will tell about it. Like maybe for one week, I'll sleep at 11 p.m. I'll get up at 6 p.m., 6 a.m. So let me just do it for one week. I'll give the reward to myself as well. I'll tell somebody about it. Okay. Next is, uh, you, uh, you know, strengthen yourself by relaxation response. You calm yourself, calm your bar, body, calm your mind. How? First of all, you can do activities at home that help me relax. Like for me, I, I really like to do gardening or baking when I, uh, when it, it, it relaxes me. Okay, like for my uh, my husband, he, lo he loves to cook. So that is how he relaxes, okay? So then second, uh, activities at work that help you relax. You need to identify what are the activities at work, at work station that helps you relax. Now third is you can uh, try out relaxation strategies. Like as I told mindfulness uh, meditation, you can try, okay? And you can also, you know, self-soothe by yourself by doing something related to all the five senses. Like tactile, you can hold something. Like uh, suppose you really have a tendency of harming yourself, you can just take a ice, you know, in your hand and then hold it so that that thought of harming yourself might go. Okay. Or sometimes what I give uh, tell my patient is suppose the patient has a tendency of cutting yourself. What you can do is you can just instead of cutting, you can just with a sketch pen maybe mark the place so that at least you feel the same sensation that you have been feeling. Okay. So then smell, you can smell in fresh air. Sometimes you can also have this pot for you. You can smell lavender, you know, whatever smell you like. Sometimes visual, like, you know, looking at window, just sitting in the balcony, sometimes even photos of your past. You know, during the pandemic, I've told a lot of people to watch their albums. You know, go visit your past, watch your albums. It will make you nostalgic, it will make you feel good. So those, those kind of things also sell to this you. Then auditory, obviously music sounds of nature you can you know there are a lot of like you know spotify has a lot of music uh, the sounds you want you can sound, listen to then taste suppose you want to relax yourself you can have chocolate you can whatever you like like you know maybe some some it can be tea 
teas are for some it can be chocolates for some it can be something else okay so you need to identify what suits you uh next is use your strengths you have to describe a time that you were able to overcome or handle a major challenge in your life suppose what did you learn about yourself you know what personal strengths did you draw upon you can even imagine uh, or draw or about what what, what when were you, you were most resilient how how you might apply this strength now so you're learning from your past experiences how you you know um, uh what strengths you used in the past so that you can again use the same in the coming uh, challenges fifth is increasing positive emotions on daily basis like sources of joy you need to identify gratitude visit or letter, uh, letter and then accomplishments it can be small small accomplishments like i have i have did the, i did the exercise for 30 minutes today that can be a positive emotion you know that can be an accomplishment and engaging in meaningful activities like you know uh, you need to notice what happened in your day that was meaningful that was meaningful that means you are mindful you knew that you know you were doing involved and that it was really important to you you really enjoyed doing it that certain you know like uh, you know um, suppose uh, when i do gardening i don't know how time passes by or when i do baking i don't know how time pass passes by so the flow so if you're doing something meaningful it comes in flow okay you don't keep a track so you engage in those kind of meaningful activities also counter unhelpful thinking so when you are very stressed then ask yourself what is the worst that could happen and what is the best that could happen in any situation stressful situation you ask what is the worst what is the best and most likely what would i tell a friend in similar situation you now tend to think from a friend's perspective suppose you are not experiencing the stressful situation but your friend is how are we going to help that friend okay if you can't stop thinking about the situation this is a very good example uh, i have given to my patients and it's been very helpful you write about that a uh, couple of times maybe over four weeks about 15 minutes each and you can see yourself how the story changes you know how your a uh, situation what you thought changes over the time in four weeks it becomes no more clear it gives you a better perspective if you are being very hard on yourself practice self compassion love yourself first always look into the mirror and tell yourself you are beautiful you can achieve you know i uh, this one one thing that is very important is uh, the self affirmatory statements you know that it also works as a coping mechanism to many Then you tell you that I can, I will. I tell my patients, you know, you just write it and stick it on the wall. I can and I will, you know. So this kind of statements is it, it, it's really helpful. Then uh, uh, many a times in, in in when you talk about resilience, there's this uh, uh, there's always a hero or a coach or a mentor that has encouraged you, especially when you are doubting yourself. Okay, you tend to remember. Suppose it can be a friend, it can be a tuition teacher, it can be a class teacher, it can be a different teacher you know it can be your uh, uncle anybody your your auntie so any person who really helped you during that uh, time when you really doubted yourself you know remember that and you post it somewhere so that is also that helps you to uh, counter your unhelpful thinking so connect daily connect daily with people uh, start off with your family members at least have your meals together have your conversation together now there are many people people the fathers come and tell me ma'am i'm very busy i come late at home i cannot connect with the children by the time uh, i get up they already goes to they are they are already off to school so i say but still you have to take out some time at least half an hour's time with your children so you need to have a connection okay so you have to identify your sources of support it can be from the work it can be community and at last but not the least you have to have good communication skill okay communication transparency is very very important because difficult conversation sometimes leads to difficult relationships all right uh, now uh, coming to the slide where i started from now when we look look into this can you understand the meaning of resilience yes or no i can't hear anybody <laughs> Student, yeah. please uh, respond in the chat box. Uh, okay. All right. So what happens is, see, we 
sometimes we'll have dark phases in our life but if we are resilient enough we'll find that ladder and we'll climb up to the brighter sides okay and uh, 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 i would like to end my presentation with a quote which i really like is i am not what happened to me i am what i choose to become we'll have lot of experiences in our life but choose the ones so that it makes you more stronger okay and also you know we have lot of capacity we as human being we have lot of capacity capacity for resilience but what we is important that you know we uh, look out for each other and we hold each other and most importantly in this pandemic so that we can overcome any kind of adversity that you know, we might face and we work together uh, not only uh, individually but also with in context of family in context of community uh government uh, you know uh, uh, state uh, so for so far so therefore um, it's very important that uh, we have um, uh, uh, we we know what we want uh, we know uh, what other things we have to uh, may uh, collect from our life to make ourselves a stronger individual and be more resilient about it thank you thank you jashri das for the beautiful presentation and the excellent explanation on the subject uh, thank you for taking us through a journey of building resilience and the important takeaways uh, of this session i have just noted some of the takeaways for us uh, they are like for building resilience we need to build trust empathy mindfulness and we need to exercise for releasing endorphins then we need to have a purpose in life and also we need to adopt certain strategies for building resilience thank you once again jashri das and now let us come to the question and answer session and now we have uh, first uh, three questions for dr anishak das Dr. Das, are you there? Then we will move on to the questions for Dr. Uh, Shri Das. The first question is by Gita Thakosi. Ma'am, do you believe that Sekoni Agot Bidya? He mean to ask that is physical uh, punishment necessary for making the child study? Unless you unmute. Anishak, unmute. I request an Dr. Anishak Das to unmute himself. I think this question is for uh, Jaisi Das. Uh, do I say or Anishak? you you are not mute okay a host uh, ma'am you have to unmute anishak uh, it's not allowed it's not allowed i am not he's seeing his screen actually he's an unmute i have just now unmuted him okay okay, okay yeah okay. okay yeah it's uh -huh. right okay yeah. so what was anishak my question yeah. Yeah, yeah there are three questions for you the yeah. first question is what lifestyle changes can i make to help me feel better this is by rahul aloy what okay. lifestyle changes can i make to help me feel better and what are the next two questions i'll uh, uh, the next question is by gitar to kosik i can't concentrate on my work what should i do then the third question uh, the name is not there do cultural environment play an important role in stress management these are the three questions now uh, coming to the first question uh, lifestyle changes uh, obviously to get away from any stress or any anxiety or any depression is the first and foremost thing we advise patients is to do the lifestyle changes most of the things i have explained and jayashri has also beautifully explained in her presentation the first one foremost lifestyle change is to bring about the daily scheduling it's not that if you are suffering from any stress or any anxiety or any depression 
it's not that you will uh, keep ruminating over the same thing or the other or the negative things you bring about and you carry on with your regular uh, activities like sleeping in the right time eating the right thing exercising one very important thing which i have stressed upon is sleep 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 is the most important thing and there are definitely sleep hygiene techniques that i need want to mention here uh, that if you don't get proper sleep it is the first and foremost sign that you tend that you are developing a mental illness so uh, regulating your sleep habits uh, is the most important thing you get up at the right time you get go uh, go to bed at the right time and the same time every day if you don't feel sleepy just don't hover over the phone or the internet rather uh, just uh, keep your mobile phones away from the bedroom that is the best practice guidelines that we uh, tell patients to do uh, before going to sleep just freshen yourself up the room should be dark it should be properly aired to get proper sleep and uh, also uh, keep uh, having caffeine related drinks in the evening hour that will help to promote your sleep early and uh, uh, so sleep is one of the lifestyle changes that you need to bring you should get proper sleep number two definitely exercise physical exercises most importantly increase our immune system nowadays and immune system is very much related to all the psychological uh, or the emotional disorders that we have uh, if we keep our immune system uh, uh, at the healthy level by exercising by eating healthy then most of this stress will definitely come down because recent studies and recent scientific data indicate that if you have a poor immune system then apart from getting infection and other physical ailments uh, we can also have stress and depression so again eating right and exercising is one of the most important thing thirdly again meditation yoga mindfulness practices which she has uh, uh, already explained the mindfulness activities and fourthly um, uh, lifestyle changes is uh, keep yourself away from smoking uh, keep yourself away from most of the drugs uh, alcohol social drinking is allowed up to a extent in our society uh, 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 and uh, most importantly screen time addiction has to be decreased nowadays in everybody screen addiction is a huge huge problem nowadays uh, uh, in children adolescent so also in the adult age group so screen addiction should be uh, 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 should be taken care of and um, and finally uh, as i have already mentioned try finding out a recreation activity that will uh, reduce your stress and anxiety levels and uh, apart from this uh, if all those lifestyle changes do not help you we mental professionals are always there to help you out that is the first question uh, second question was uh, concentration again uh, uh, these uh, lifestyle changes will help someone to concentrate better obviously we need to interview the person who has asked the question at a personal level or or a professional level because again a loss of concentration might be due to other stressors other uh, depressive factors we need to assess we need to assess the other anxiety factors if uh there is an other root causes that are causing loss of concentration we need to uh speak with the person concerned at a, a personal level not in this uh, general forum and there are obviously uh, uh, attention enhancement exercises are there which are being given to the patients by clinical psychologists so those are helpful and uh, coming to the third uh, po- uh, question which is very uh, it's a very good question culturally uh, what was that question ma'am if you can repeat do cultural environment play an important role in stress management absolutely absolutely that is uh, uh, in any any health particularly in mental health we have three dimensions which i have not mentioned today in my presentations it is known as the bio psycho social factors that lead to any uh, that are the positive factors of any mental illness biological of obviously the genetic factors that we inherit from our parents the psychological factors are the intelligence the personality factors uh, that come into uh, the uh, forefront and the third most important thing that we cannot uh, minimize the social effects or the cultural effects in the development of any mental illness the social effects obviously the uh, uh, environment in which we grow up our parental influences are uh, the uh, neighborhood which we grow up 
uh, the uh, the uh, cultural uh, and the moral principles that uh, we are brought up and again the teachers and the school uh, also do influence us uh, in the development of our personality so obviously culture plays a very important role uh, in managing stress and um, uh, there are very uh, uh, various studies which you can find that how culture plays a significant role uh, uh, from the uh, definitely our western culture and our indian culture are uh, the differences are from heaven uh, it's quite uh, significant differences in our cultural aspect so uh, want to cut you in between yeah. anushak i i want to know what culture he is meaning to is he meaning cultural what what does he mean by culture actually is it the cultural functions he is talking about the culture no, i i think it is the cultural society cultural norms he is talking about okay um uh, but i think you, if you're talking about uh, you know there might there are a lot of people who takes into different kind of cultural programs for whenever they are stressed that can be a part of distraction techniques no, you're using i think i think that is not the cultural program okay. he is asking about it okay. is the different culture cultural norms mm -hmm. i guess he is asking about okay. so uh, yes ma'am that is what i wanted to tell Thank you, Dr. Anishak Das. Can I take two more questions? Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Surely. Yeah, uh, like, uh, Jai Shri has want to answer. Second, you have got the idea. For uh, that, before that, uh, <laughs> two questions are for Dr. Anishak Das. Yeah, How to sure. deal with imaginary issues like snakes and ghosts? Okay. And secondly, okay. can anxiety lead to depression? I like to answer the first question. Anxiety can definitely lead to depression. see whatever stressors we have as i have told in my uh, in my uh, presentation in the initial part of my presentation first there will be stress people who can cope up with stress and uh, people who can uh, adjust to different various uh, issues in their life they go out and they carry on with their activities and their life that obviously depends upon the personality factors the vulnerability factors but those who are not being able to uh, cope up with stress they go into anxiety issues they will have panic attacks panic attacks uh, are are features suggestive of uh, breathlessness um, uh, sudden tremors in your body sudden spells of urination uh, sudden sp spells of defecation uh, movement in your stomach all bodily symptoms and then uh, when people have uh, tend to have prolonged anxiety and stress then definitely there will be depression so anxiety and depression are connected uh, in a uh both ways and most of the patients we do see have comorbid anxiety with depression and comorbid depression with anxiety so we have two separate sets of uh, diagnosis if you ask more technically one people one group of people will have only anxiety one group of people will only have depression coming out from anxiety and someone will have mixed fixture which we know as uh, which we call them as mixed anxiety depression And I have one uh, uh, question that has been coming again and again, and I, I, I want Anresha to please uh, speak to it, ma'am. Ma Manjusha, ma'am, please, I'm cutting you in between. But yes, I feel it is very okay. important. I've seen three times the question coming up. Is depression uh, curable? Yes, exactly. Is depression yeah, curable? I'll, I'll, please, yeah. and also is PTSD curable? And yeah, how I'll long come, does it take to get out of this? Yeah, I'll come come to that. Uh, but I'll speak of this snake and imaginary thing issues. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, see imaginary things coming in front of your eyes are uh, something serious we psychiatrists they take take as right it might be just an um, uh, it might be just an imaginary dream that you are having or some imaginary play or imaginary thing that you have uh, been uh, thinking of or something illuminating you must be thinking of but this issue is someone is having i suggest he should consult a psychiatrist yeah am i audible Louder, your yeah. voice is very soft. very much. Yeah, uh, because if 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 that issue is cropping up frequently, I suggest him to consult any of the psychiatrists because uh, it might be due to OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorders, those ruminating uh, images that comes and he cannot uh, tend to keep those images out of his thoughts. That suggests OCD, and if those thoughts are fearful, if those images are fearful, that might be. leading to a more serious kind of mental illness so it that issue needs to be properly interviewed and properly assessed along with the family members i suggest him to go to a uh, psychiatrist immediately if he is having that problem continuously and uh, one very important uh, question uh, being brought into notice by jayesh is is depression curable 
and manageable again i want to tell you depression let's talk that was my uh, penultimate slide if uh, if the students can remember depression is 100% curable it is 100 100 and 100% curable please come out if anybody of you are having symptoms of those internalizing externalizing features please please come out and don't stigmatize yourself keep inside your room communicate speak with your seniors speak with your parents teachers friends anyone and there are scientifically proven treatments scientifically proven medicines that help to cure depression obviously when you come to a clinician a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist we do certain uh, uh, we use certain some of the scales to find out the level of depression and uh, according to the guidelines we give treatment if it is manageable with psychotherapy cbt we refer it, uh, the patient to a clinical psychologist if we see that the symptoms are quite moderate or severe we initially give a brief dose of medication and then the cbt or the uh, cbt part is taken care by clinical psychologist and uh, see the treatment time is uh, depends upon the improvement factor uh, the precipitating factor that caused its depression and various other influences are there uh, 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 depending upon which we continue treatment but what the book says that at least 9 months to 1 year we uh, do continue with the treatment and uh, many people do ask me that uh, depression medicines knock you off they make you feel sleepy they are sedatives which is at all which is not the fact actually depression medicines do not cause any sleeplessness depression medicines do not cause any uh, uh, knocking off effect obviously every medicine has their sets of side effects but those side effects are very much normal in every medication side effects does not cause any harm to the body it is if you ask me technically it is the adverse effects which cause uh, uh, harm to the body and those adverse effects are only uh, occurring in the body if someone takes the medicine more than the recommended dose which obviously trained psychiatrists do not give anywhere in the world so within the domain of your uh, of your severity within the uh, within the professional ethics every psychiatrist will prescribe you medicines and i suggest you to take those medicines sincerely and religiously and it is very much useful and uh, just to, to again seal off the uh, question its depression is 100% curable and um, all people with depression come from another Thank question you, i see does hallucination always means schizophrenia no hallucination does not always means schizophrenia hallucinations can occur when a person is very much depressed it can occur in sudden panic attacks also it can occur even after alcohol intoxication or drug withdrawal so hallucination does not always means schizophrenia okay dr anisha das thank you very much for answering the questions here i would like to uh, speak a few words to our students uh, dear students thank you for uh, being with us uh, during these two sessions but there is time constraint and so uh, it's not not possible to take all the questions in this session today please try to understand uh, we are running out of time it's time to wind up let us not give stress to our uh, resource no. persons after, we would have definitely like to continue not, because uh, after because... all <laughs> thank you uh, it's a mental health session and i have been repeatedly told uh, not to give uh, any more stress to our uh, no, it's a, resource just, persons I, i just want to interrupt ma'am there are many questions which are very significant and important questions ma'am yes. we are free to share our numbers with our your students you can definitely sure. the students can definitely take down our numbers from ma'am and we will be free to uh, hear their queries whatever uh, possible way we can uh, to uh, uh, any means uh, possible we just so you want to let you all know that please whatever whenever you want to reach out to somebody we are there okay if not we anybody else working yes. in the mental health professional Correct. please speak out please do not take it for granted you know please don't take it lightly and always please don't feel that monto balagi as it means does not mean depression mon so monto balagi is not depression correct it's not depression okay so yeah we all have lows downs uh, ups so uh, we all need to fight okay we need to be resilient enough to come out of this You and can take down future. take down the numbers, and we'll be grateful enough to uh, clear your queries. Can you please type the numbers?
Ma'am, I guess you have Jayashree's number. Yes. So you, if any Seven students zero, want. Eight six zero two five eight one. Yeah. I'll, Seven zero eight six zero triple five eight one is Anveshaks, and seven zero eight six zero triple five eight two is mine. That shows that we are husband and wife. <laughs> Same numbers, and this one and two. Yeah. In future, we can take up more such sessions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, Garyashi Baba was telling uh, because a lot of teachers was attended, and today actually we were targeting only the student population, as we had spoken earlier. So maybe we can conduct a session for the teachers. You know how to tackle the things. So I'm really sorry if the teachers were disappointed by today's uh, session, uh, but we were told this session was only for the student population. So hence the presentation. So I guess the teachers will right. also. Get yeah, but you will have the, a better understanding yeah. of the students' uh, medical, adolescent mental health and adult. Uh, we will be organizing for the teachers as well, in future. So uh, now I would like to. Uh, ask Shrabani Bhattacharya to give the vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Um, before I start with the vote of thanks, there is an announcement for all of the participants. There is a feedback form which will be provided for you in the chat box. And the link for the feedback form is only valid up to... Not audible, Shravani. Not audible. Connectivity issue. Shravani? Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, it, it just got connect, uh, connected now. Yeah, you can continue. I'm uh, giving the feedback form. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, I, Shravani Bhattacharya, on behalf of the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences from Assam Downtown University, would like to deliver the vote of thanks for today's session. First and foremost, we would like to thank our managing trustee, Ms. Garyasi Datta, ma'am, for uh, without whom uh, the webinar would not have been such a grand success. Uh, we, we are equally grateful to Dr. Seema Sharma, ma'am, Dean of Commerce, Humanities, Management and Social Sciences for constantly guiding us through the webinar preparations. We would also like to thank Dr. Anjan Thakur, sir, Director of IQAC, and now uh, we would like to thank our prime speakers uh, for the webinar, Dr. Anveshak Das Sir and Ms. Jayashri Das Ma'am for such an informative and engaging session. And the proof is the chat box, which has been overflowing with a lot of positive comments from all of the participants. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am for your valuable time and enthusiasm in reaching to us and the students. Uh, we eagerly look forward to listening more uh, in the few, from both of you in the future. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, once again. Um, I would also like to thank our IT, prof uh, IT officer, Ankur, sir, for constantly helping us with the IT management parts. And before coming to the end, I would sincerely like to thank Dr. Manjusha Deka Saikya, ma'am, for working tirelessly in making the webinar a success. And my dear faculty members of the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. Lastly, I would like to thank all the participants for making this webinar a grand success. Thank you so much. Um, so there is an announcement I'm repeating once again. There is a link for the feedback form, which has been provided in the chat box. It is compulsory for everyone to fill the feedback form. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. And ma'am and sir has provided the phone numbers. You can contact them. Uh, if, if you give Stop us... Me. Hello. Shavani, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt. Shavani, yes. I think you're the host. Yes. Uh, can you please unmute Seema, ma'am? Yes, one second. Yeah.
Yes, ma'am. Uh, you are audible. Seema, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, Shravani. Uh, it was really a wonderful session, Mr. and uh, Jessi, ma'am. And we would love to hear from you for our faculties also. And we would love to have some more sessions from you for our students also. Surely, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So I think with that we come to the close of these two sessions. Thank you once again to all of you. Uh, uh, all yes, ma'am. Uh, just a second. Uh, before we end the session, I would again like to repeat. I'm again posting the feedback form uh, in the chat, uh, ma'am. Uh, Manjusha, ma'am, yes. if we can uh, keep the meeting on for some time so that they can access the feedback form. When we close the meeting, we will not be uh, ex uh, able to access the feedback form. Sure. So the feedback form will be uh, valid till half an hour. So till 1.30, everyone can fill up the feedback form. And when you fill up the feedback form, we can provide you with the certificates. Thank you. So I think we can leave, ma'am, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, so ma'am. Ma Thank you so much. Thank you. The participants who have filled up the feedback form can leave the session. Thank you so much for your active participation today. We are going to give the certificates to only those who are filling the feedback form. Bornaliba, I have again posted the feedback form. Please try again once. I think Ritika, if it's not working, maybe we can send them on the ADTU group. Sure, we can do that. The, the department people need not to worry. Uh, we can uh, like, we will we'll help them out. Others, please uh, fill up the form. Ritika and Shabani, can I leave? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, yes, ma'am. Ma Thank you so much for your help. Okay. Anytime, ma'am. Anytime, ma'am. <laughs>
uh, those who have submitted can leave the session. Shavani, I'm posting the feedback form in our group. Yeah, no, I'm just uh, reminding the students to fill up the feedback form once again. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, in the teachers group, I'm posting it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah. I hope there is no problem and everyone is able to fill it up. Shavani, there are 55 participants still there. Uh, yes, I yes. Uh, I request those who have filled up the feedback form can leave the session.
Shravani, what image uh, is the participant talking about? Can we just once check? Which image? See the chat box once? Yeah. I can't see the image, ma'am. 